So human-centered design, uh, it really all starts with our process and, and understanding why it fits into our process. So I know we've probably shared this slide with you, but it's been very, uh, it's been months actually. So um, oftentimes many of you jump into a project once it reaches this development phase of prototype and building an MVP. Uh, but behind the scenes, we're doing quite a bit of work to identify the right problem to solve and to uh, engage stakeholders at the right time in defining what that problem is, what those user needs are. Oftentimes, partners come to us and say, uh, could you please help us unpack the needs of our users and stakeholders? And that's where human-centered design and design research comes into play. Um, and this is a term that's being used all over the industry. And you'll see process maps like this uh, that tell the story of what those steps are and why. Um, I like this one because it does emphasize the fact that this is quite an iterative process. You can see it, this process map has influenced even ours. This is what the process looks like, uh, those, those first steps in particular, in regard to uh, one of our projects that took place a couple months ago. This one is asking the question of how might we help working parents of K to eight students with schooling their kids. And we spent some time getting to know working parents. Uh, there was a group of about eight people that did a round of interviews, collected insights, and then translated those insights into ideas that ended up producing a curriculum that COSI branded and sponsored and is now on COSI's site. But why do we do this human-centered design process? And it's really these three reasons. We wanna understand people deeply, really understand the needs that they have. And in some cases, we end up reframing the challenge that we're actually looking to solve. And then also to pause and be generative before deciding on what it is we wanna build. Design research is different than marketing research. And I know some of you know this inherently because you've been doing design research as part of your day job. Uh, but I do like this snapshot of design research and the focus it has on people. It borrows from social and behavioral sciences and really inspires design, sometimes celebrating that unique and peculiar. Some community partners that we've worked with, and this list has grown quite a bit, but you'll see here there are several design sprints that we've done, uh, return to childcare, uh, reimagining the student experience. We'll talk through that one in more depth here in a minute. That was with Dress for Success. Shop Small Design Sprint, we'll also highlight that one today. Um, reimagining distance learning, um, graduating seniors and reimagining the graduation experience. We partnered with Columbus City Schools for that one. And even successful restaurant reopening design, that was way back uh, in 2020. 